Well, kids, if you want to come down so you can see better, that would be great. Our story begins in some hills in the Judean region near Bethlehem, 2,000 years ago. And that night, there were out in the fields some shepherds. And they weren't like our modern shepherds. They didn't have quad bikes and sheep dogs. They were just poor men who looked after the sheep through the day led them to places of where they could get food and at night time guarded them because there were wolves and other things around. So it was a lonely job to be a dirty job, to be a dangerous job and lots of people didn't think very highly of the shepherds because of the work they did. They weren't sort of everyone's favourite but this night something out of the ordinary happened. Perhaps they were sitting around their campfire, the sheep were safe, when suddenly the, the sky all around them began to blaze with light. And it was a light like they'd never seen, brighter than day. And in that light, they saw a figure One they had never seen, a great and glorious angel of God, come before them. Wow! I wonder, did they think, let me get my camera and get a picture? Or maybe someone else thought, wait till I tell the other guys. Well, no, that wasn't what happened at all. The Bible tells us that when they saw the angel, they were filled with not happiness, but fear. They were terrified. They were really, really scared. Now, to think, why is that? Why were they so scared? If we go back in time, right, right back to the beginning, perhaps you know the story where God made the world and God made Adam and he gave Adam a companion, the first woman, Adam and Eve. They used to really look forward to that part of the day when God would come in the figure of a man and meet with them and talk with them and walk with them in that beautiful garden of Eden. It was the happiest time of every happy day for them. But God gave them one thing not to do. One thing to test them. Would they love him? Would they trust him? Would they believe him? Just because. And unfortunately they didn't. They thought they knew better. They believed a lie that they could be like God by disobeying God. And then they became afraid. And when God came that day into the garden, they were filled with fear. They were terrified. They hid themselves. But you can't hide from God. And from that time on, people have been frightened of God. Now, why is that? I'm going to put up a word here that will explain it. because of wrongs, wrong things. Lots of wrong things. Every war tells us something is very, very, very wrong. And someone will have to pay for it. Every hate, every hurt, every fight tells us something is very, very, very wrong. And someone's gonna to have to pay for it. Every lie. Every stolen thing, every grave and every dying tells us that something is very wrong and someone will have to pay for it. That's why the shepherds were so frightened. They weren't grinning, they were scared because of what they had seen. 
because they knew they'd done things that were wrong. I think a person would be very, very, very silly if they were to say, I can't wait to meet God and get what I deserve. Oh no. The wise person never says that, only the silly one. So that was the reason, the reason why they were scared. They weren't ready to meet God and they knew it. So their wrongs and the wrongs of all the world brought fear. That would be an awful Christmas story if it stopped there, wouldn't it? But it doesn't stop there because the angel then spoke to them. And I'm just going to give you one word which will sum up what he said. They were fearful, but he had a, a not. Fear not, was what the angel said. Don't be frightened. <coughs> Don't be frightened, he said. There's no need for fear. Now, another question. Why was that? Why didn't they have to be frightened? Here's a mighty angel of God. The sky is filled with the glory of God around them. Why shouldn't they be frightened? Because of the good message that the angel brought to them. The good message. The angel said, God is sending good news to all the people. To all peoples of the earth. For today, there has been born a little baby in the town of Bethlehem. And he said to the shepherds, you will find the baby lying in a manger. Now, do any of you boys and girls know what a manger is? Yes, what's a manger? It's like a little barn slash shed thing that they keep Yeah, pretty close. It is in a shed. But uh, it's smaller than the shed itself. Anyone want to say anything further? What's a manger? Yes? A stable? No, that's, that's like the shed, the stable. I'll tell you. In the stable, there was a feeding trough. Like a huge sort of bowl, I suppose. You think of square, probably, on legs. And in there would go the food for the animals. That's where this baby was put. Not in a palace. Not in a nice, freshly painted uh, bedroom in the house for the new arrival in a nice cradle wrapped in beautifully clean, tidy blankets and things. No, he was laid in a feed trough in a stable because there was no room for the family. But the angel's message was, today is born to you in Bethlehem, as promised. A rescuer, and I'll put that word up. The baby's name, if you haven't guessed already, was Jesus. And his name means God God rescues. But I'll call him God's rescuer. We tend to use the word saviour at times, but it's probably not a word we use much, except maybe a lifesaver at the beach. Oh, Ghibli paint. The reason not to be fearful was because God had sent someone to pay for all the wrongs that had been done. So that's why they didn't have to fear. That's why the angel could tell them, don't be afraid because the rescuer has come. Just like God promised. God didn't forget. God loved Adam and Eve and he's loved everyone ever that's lived since. And he wants them to come back to him. But to do that, there has to be something done with all these wrongs. And that's where Jesus fits in. The little baby who was born that day. He grew up to be a young man. He grew up to be 30 years old. He did many wonderful things. But then at the last, 
He did the one job that none of us could do, to take away all the wrongdoing. He gave his life, the greatest of Christmas gifts. When we remember Christmas with all the lovely things, we should remember God's greatest present that he gave to us. The reason we have all our presents and the reason we have songs to sing, the reason we have times for happiness is because God sent his son, a little baby born in a stable, laid in a feeding trough, who later on gave his life so that we might be rescued. Our wrongdoings cause us to fear that the angel had good news. Don't be afraid. Fear not, because the rescuer has come. That is the story of Christmas. So when you get your Christmas presents, when you see anything to do with Christmas, try and remember and say, thank you, God, for the greatest ever Christmas gift, Jesus. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you, everybody.